What's happening everybody? This is on Sean with On Beat Entertainment. Today I'm doing a tutorial on Logic Pro X and I'm going to show you how to easily match up any sample you may have to any tempo that you may want it to be at. So um, I'm, you see right here on the screen right now that I've got two samples. They're both identical samples. The reason I have two of them is because I'm first going to show you how to accomplish this if you already know the tempo of the sample that you're using. Um, and the second example I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't know the tempo of the sample that you're that you're working with so let's go back to the first method which is if you know the the tempo of your sample that you're working with so let's say that this is off to the side here and we've got a track playing and our track is at um, uh, 124 and we're, we're working with this track at 124 and then we pull this sample in and we see wow this isn't matching right but then we play it and if you do have if you actually do have a rest of the quote unquote rest of the track you may want to just solo this sample just because all you really want to hear is this sample and the metronome and i've got the metronome set to play um, to click while playing you can just click and hold this and make sure click while playing is selected here um, and I, that's what i want to hear so i can hear how close or how far it is And it sounds pretty far off, right? It's definitely not matching. So again, in this example, we already know the tempo of our current sample. So let's say that we already know this sample is at 134. Okay, we already know this because we pulled it from one of those sample sites like Splice or Sounds or something like that. And it's already marked or for whatever reason, we already know the, the, the tempo. Okay, so in this, the tempo is 134, so what we're gonna do, our project is at 124, so how do we get this 134 sample to match up with our 124 project's tempo? The first thing you wanna do is change the project tempo to match that of the sample, which is, we know the sample is 134, so we change the project tempo to 134, but again, important to note that now the rest of your entire song will be playing out of sync, so if that bothers you or you don't wanna hear that, again, make sure this is soloed just for a second, so now that this is set to, now that our project tempo is matching our sample tempo, all we have to do is turn flex time on here and then come down, that turns it on for the project. Then we're going to come down here and turn flex time on for the, um, for the track that we're working with, which is this track. And now we're going to select a, a uh, flex algorithm. You can see that, um, that logic already selected polyphonic that's the one i was going to select if you don't know what these algorithms are i'm not going to go through them in detail i will tell you if you don't know what these are just select polyphonic for now and that will likely cover you either way um that's that's probably the most used one that i would think um so so polyphonic should cover you pretty much regardless once but i would definitely tell you learn what all these are because um, it will help you in in a, a lot and, and some of them actually can can create some cool sound and effects as well so um, if you want to know what all these mean you can check out my other tutorial on uh, quantizing your audio samples and i go through all the, in the second half of that tutorial i go through all these in detail and give you an explanation so that you can better understand what all these are. So that is the um, the quantizing your your uh, samples tutorial that I have. Um, if you want to check that out, um, you'll learn what all these are. But for now, just click polyphonic. And now that flex time is turned on on the track, all I got to do is come down here and change the track back to 124, which is what our project was originally. And now that I've changed it with flex time on, you saw when I changed it the sample didn't change length at all all right it, it stayed locked within the um within this grid within the four bar loop so now when i play it it's matching up perfectly so as long as i have flex time turned on on the track and then on on the oh, i'm sorry on the project and then on for the track i can do this um i can keep doing this i can go change it to 60 60 bpms Or I can change it to, uh, let's go 312. So that's how you basically do it. Just remember that the, the very first, when you, when you initially match the sample with the project, 
um, you, you're going to want to have that off for the very first step of this, have flex time turned off. Once you get the project tempo matching the sample tempo, that's when you turn flex time on and then change it back to change the tempo back to whatever your project really is supposed to be at. And then that will change the sample accordingly. And then you can keep keep changing the sample all you want at that point and it's locked in. So that's how you do that if you already know the um, the, the tempo of your sample. But what if you don't know the tempo of your sample? That's what this, um, this one is for down here. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to mute this one. And so this one instead. Whoops. There we go. Um, and I'm going to change this back to... What are we, where are we at? 134, was it? Yeah. Okay, back to normal. So now, same scenario, let's drag this out. Let's say that we've got a song that we're working with, and our song is, is our project's at 124, and then we come and drag this other sample. Now, we know the sample's 134, but let's say for the sake of argument, we don't know what the tempo of this, this is. So we drag it in. Again, all we know is it's not matching. Okay, clearly not matching, but how do we change it? Well, before, when we knew this tempo, all we're going to do is change this, right? Change our project tempo to match this, but we don't know what this is right now. So how do we find out what this is? Well, it's a pretty easy way. Um, what you're going to do is select this track first, make sure this region is selected, then come down here on that track and on this channel and uh, come to audio effects. And we're going to go to uh, modulation. I'm sorry, to, we're going to come to metering and BPM counter, and we're gonna select BPM counter. And now when we play it, it's gonna send everything on this track. It won't it won't listen to the rest of the track, it won't listen to the click, it won't hear any of that. All it's listening to is whatever you have on this track. And it's gonna to try to determine, by using the transients of this track, it's gonna try determining what the uh, BPM is. Now, before we do this, I can already tell you it's not going to work on this one. It doesn't always work. It does a pretty good job at it. It works more often than not. But sometimes with certain samples, it doesn't always do an exceptional job at it. So I'm using this sample for a reason because it wouldn't find it. And there is still a way that you can do it um, if it won't find it. And it involves going down here and now opening up another plugin. Um, I usually come down here to modulation. There's a lot of these that you can tweak um, and and basically twist the audio a little bit to enhance those transients to make it sound, um, make the transient sound a little fuller uh, so that Logic can clearly detect them as, as what they are and um, and pick up on the BPM. But for this one, I'll, I'll take you even a different route and we'll come down here to specialize and I'll come to sub bass and I'll turn sub bass on. And now I'm just going to let this play for a little bit uh, while I tweak this. But I'm, I'm basically trying, remember, I'm trying to get it so that there's some sort of bump in the transients so that Logic can pick up on, on the tempo. So um, let's see if I can do that real quick. going to want to put the BPM um, effect after the sub bass because I want it to run through the sub bass first and then hit the BPM. So I'm going to drag this down. So now we've got it going through the sub bass first and then the BPM. So now let's take a listen. And, and hey, sometimes the BPM counter picks up on it really quickly within like a, 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 a one or two bars. Sometimes it takes five or six bars. Sometimes it takes 16, 20 bars. Sometimes it takes 24 bars or so. So let's just take a listen and keep our fingers crossed and hope that this finds it. Oh, and by the way, this is going to, I'm going to change this um, so that it matches. So I'm going to change my cycle time so that it matches the sample. Um, because if it, because if, it get, if it gets all the way to the end there and it's not spot on, well then it's going to, it's going to mess up. That's going to mess with the timing, right? And it's going to throw logic off a little more. So I want this to be a perfect cycle loop. There it is. 
is 134.0, right? And that's what we know the sample is. So that's how we get around that. And that's not the only way. There are several ways that you can do it in logic and just kind of trick it. Um, so that's how you can figure that out. So now we have the sample time is 134. The sample tempo is 134. So we do just like we did in the first one. First thing we do without flex time turned on is we come up here and change this to 134 to match the sample. And now once we have, I'm going to fix this uh, cycle time too here. Um, and now that we have that, uh, now that we have the project tempo matching the sample tempo, we can come right back, turn um, flex time on on that particular track, and then turn it right back down to 124, and now it matches. <laughs> shut off that sub bass effect at this point or click it and do no plug-in and I can get rid of the BPM thing too if I want and there you go that's how you do it and by the way you may just want to do a bounce in place here on this you can right click and come to bounce in place here um, because it, you, you want to render it once you get it to where you want it to get so that so that it doesn't uh, accidentally change at a later point or whatever. you don't have to keep flex time turned on the whole time so that's how you do it and actually before i go i'll show you one other quick thing while we're on with flex time um, while flex time is turned on you can actually just come up here to a corner and click it without hitting option or, or shift or anything just click the top right corner and drag it wherever you want and that time compresses a sample too You don't get that exact timing of being able to make it a, 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 a an exact tempo as the way I just showed you. But if you just need it to fit in a, in a particular way, all you got to do is turn flex time on. And it's already, as soon as you turn it on on the track, it's elastic. You can come grab the top right corner and just move it wherever you want. That's how you get any sample to any tempo that you want in Logic pretty quickly. And um, there are another, another number of ways that you can do it. That to me is the easiest way to do it. So now, before you go... If you would, please click the thumbs up button for me below. In addition, I'd certainly appreciate all your support. And all you have to do for that is hit the red subscribe below. That's it. Also, please leave me a comment as I do read all of them. Uh, whether it's a follow-up question, a different way you do things, something that you just want to add to the conversation, I'd love to hear from each one of you. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at OnSeanBeats, and all my social media links are in the description below, so hopefully I'll see you on there as well. As always, thanks for watching.